What is up, YouTube? That's your today. I'm proud to be bringing you guys my very first team building guide for the Teal Mass DLC. This is going to be a regulation E team building guide. And again, I just want to say this is how I like to build my teams. I know I go through a pretty weird structure when it comes to team building, but if you guys like this sort of guide, you want to see more, let me know in the comments. And without further ado, we're just going to hop right into this. So, yeah, I think we're going to be building around the brand new Ogre Pond. This is, um, I guess this is the first time I'm really using this thing. This thing has a bunch of different forms. Uh, it can have like a, a grass form, a water form, a fire form, a rock form, all of different abilities. This one is going to be Mold Breaker, and when it terastalizes into a pure fire type, it gets a plus one boost to its attack. It's very reminiscent to like a Zacian, in my opinion. So I think this is a good Pokemon to build around, and this is my first time actually using it. So what I like to do is after I add a Pokemon to my team that I know I want to look at, I would then go to a team builder. We're going to be using the Maryland team builder, which I'll have linked in the description right here. But you can see we're going to add Ogre Pond here. And it's going to show us all the different like types of things. We'll look at the Hearth Flame mask here. And it's going to make us have Fire Ogre Pond. And it's going to show us like the value of like having uh, what well, basically what we resist and what we are weak against. So when we're adding Pokemon, we don't want to add Pokemon that are stacking a bunch of the same weaknesses. We want to add Pokemon whose resistances help cover up for our weaknesses in most situations. But I would say for the first like three or four slots of a team, you do want to be adding mons that like help you accomplish your goal. So with the Ogre Pond, we're going to be wanting to, you know, hit really, really hard. That's the whole point. So we need to think of ways that we can help Ogre Pond hit really, really hard without just the use of like a helping hand. Obviously like a helping hand would be fine, but there are cooler ways to do it, which is what we're going to be doing here. So I think that means the next Pokemon that we're going to want to add here is going to be something fun like a Kanto Ninetales. Now, also don't look at any of these spreads. We're going to mess with all these spreads when I get into the game. You can see this one has Tail of Flame, Throw a Quick Attack. That's not what we're going to be using. We're going to be using a pretty cool Ninetales spread today, I think, but you can obviously tell the drought is going to do a couple things. First of all, it's going to enable us to hit even harder in the sun, but Secondary, it's going to make it so like if we're fighting it's like rain or like hail or something like that, we don't have that like reduced damage on our moves. So we're going to be powering up our Ogre Pond in more ways than one, which we'll get to in just a moment. Um, we're going to go back to the, what is it, back to the Maryland Team Builder and add this guy up. So we got nine tails right there. Make sure it's the Kanto form. And you can see right here, we have a lot of weaknesses. And um, we got to make sure our Ogre Pond is set to the Hearth Flame Mask. There we go. So you can see we already have uh, two weaknesses to rock. So we're probably going to add some weaknesses to rock types, but, you know, just taking a look at Ogre Pond, like what would use rock moves? If they're stabbing those rock moves, giving that same type of attack bonus, well, they're going to be weak to grass. And like Ogre Pond is a grass type that would outspeed most rock mons. So it's like just because we can have a couple weaknesses of those types doesn't really matter in the the overall like team building guide. Um, we also have like good resistances to like steel and fairy, which is actually kind of hard for a lot of teams to find. So it's very, very nice so far. We have good resistances to grass. So like this, this is good. We're building a good team to deal with like what the meta is right now. Um, I think the third Pokemon here, this is where, because we have like this two times weakness to rock, this is where I would personally throw one Mon on the team that has like synergy with these two as well as like a good resistance for what we actually need. So remember, we have resistances to things like fairy, so we can actually afford to like throw a fairy, a mon that's like really fairy weak in there, and we need something that resists rock. So I think the perfect Pokemon to throw in here would be something like a Great Tusk. I think Great Tusk is actually like still really, really good. People have like stopped using it and like it never really stopped being good, especially on these sort of sun teams. You can tell it's what we're building right now. So if we go back to the team building guide right here, we can throw in a Great Tusk. Very, very solid Pokemon. Remember, that's a Protosynthesis ability. And you can see, like, we're taking a look at, like, what the rest of our team of the guide looks out right now. So we have now a resistance to that rock. We have two weaknesses to um, flying here, which, you know, can be dealt with. Remember, like, Great Tusk usually terastalizes away and loses that flying weakness. Same thing for Ogre Pond, it terastalizes fire. Um, we have two weaknesses to water, but we have the sun getting set. And, like, Ogre Pond is neutral to water. So it's like, it's probably a decent enough switch in. So we're doing okay. It's around this point that I would say this is like the core of the team. So we have like uh, an aggressive Ogre Pond that gets enabled further by Ninetales. Ninetales can like side enable things like the Great Tusk. This is where I would say, once you get an idea of Pokemon you want to use and a good idea, you know, formulating in your head, you start thinking, I need to probably add some sort of speed control. This is where you decide, am I going to take this in a Trick Room? Am I going to take this in a Tailwind? What mods am I going to use to do that? So I think obviously this one will be leaning a little bit more towards Tailwind. And obviously there's three or four really, really good Tailwind setters in the meta. Um, but we're probably just going to use Tornadus, right? So we're just probably going to use a Tornadus. I think that there's 
four or five different Tailwind setters, right? There's a bulky Tailwind setter, something like a Decidueye, um, or like a Corviknight, or like an Enamorous, and those all have varying degrees of success. Then there's just like general faster Tailwinds, things like Kilowattriel, but then there's like your dynamic speed control Tailwind setters, things like Talonflame, things like Murkrow, things like Tornadus, and I would say those are a lot better than just your everyday average tailwind setters because they don't need to ask for permission to set tailwind they don't need to say like hey i'm slow don't kill me i want to set tailwind uh something like a tornado can just come in and be like it's tailwind time and when you set that tailwind it immediately enables your teammate to function at that same speed tier so we're using tornadoes here and you can see Tornus also adds oh i took my tusk out <laughs> um you can see Tornus also adds like a couple different things to this team and i also think like again this is just how i team build this is just a little tidbit whenever i'm team building i like to just open up my boxes or open up my pokemon home and just look through all the boxes and like add pokemon i'm not a big showdown guy when i team build i actually do a lot of my team building on like pencil and paper um so i like just having that like visual aid of something like actually popping out at me that's that definitely just you know inspires me because like even if i like will see something like i'll be going through my boxes and like maybe i'll see like a uh, staraptor right i might not think that i want to use staraptor but it might remind me like oh yeah final gambit could go really good in this team and then i'll go into like a final gambit user or like uh, a specific move or like ability or something special about that mon right? might, might inspire me to use a mon in like a different way like for example like i could see like a mammoth swine and i might not want to use a mammoth swine but there might be other thick fat pokemon or other oblivious pokemon or other pokemon that do what mammoth swine does that could fit in that team so that's just a little you know side tidbit here but getting back to this team we're going to go add tornadoes into the team builder and i'm sure a lot of people are already in the comments like going like that's you talked about not adding rock weaknesses but you're just adding rock weaknesses and like we talked about what are the rock type pokemon in the meta there's obviously that Rock Ogre Pond. That is problematic. You can hit that with Great Tusk. You can hit that with Nine Tails. You can hit that with your Ogre Pond. That's good. Um, but then real, realistically, I don't think there's that many just Rock types. There's Hisui and Arcanine, right? And we have a Great Tusk. So it's like, good luck, Chuck. Um, I don't, and like the rest of our mods are going to be fine versus that. I'll, t I'll tell you that in a sec. But also, like a lot of the Rock moves um, are usually on like Rock Slides, which are on Pokemon that don't really stab them. So even though, yeah, they're super effective, like, a Rock Slide super effective is usually weaker than, like, a base 100 or 120 base move that one of those Pokemon would be using, so it's not that big of a deal. It's also, those are spread moves. They're not going to be getting any big KOs, and realistically, uh, I think the last two of our Pokemon will be good for Rock types. So this is where we're going to be adding something to... This is, like, we, we have our, our core four, right? This is where we're adding something to cover up for obvious weaknesses, which is now Rock, but we're also going to be adding, like, a little bit of glue to the team. We're running out of slots. Um, we need to add something that can kind of be weaved in elongate the game and give us like options for like games two and game three to keep our opponent honest this is where i think the right pokemon to add would be something like a rillaboom i think rillaboom is a really good mon here and remember if your opponent's using any rock moves and they stab those rock moves they take big damage from rillaboom that's really really good this is also going to be adding a fake out user to the team and it's going to this fake out is going to drastically change how our flow charts work which we'll be getting into into the flow chart section of this video but i think rillaboom is like a very very good pokemon for this team it's also a much needed water resist on a lot of these mons so if we take a look back at our little guide over here so let's put in rillaboom Right there. So Rillaboom, it adds a lot of weaknesses, right? It adds another flying weakness. It adds an ice weakness. Now, ice moves and rock moves are generally, I say generally, other than things like Iron Bundle, um, you know, existing and maybe Alola Ninetales to an extent right now, uh, ice moves like Icy Winds are on mons that don't stab them. Like Flutter is the most common Icy Wind user in the meta right now, and it doesn't stab the Icy Wind. So just because you have a weakness to Icy Wind, that doesn't really matter. Um, and also think about it, like if your opponent's using an ice attack on you from a stabbed Pokemon that would use an ice attack, but we have a fire team, right? So, and a fire fighting team, so we're fine. Same thing goes for like flying. Like Tornadus could be somewhat problematic, but if we have a mom that's potentially faster than Tornadus, they can Oko Tornadus with the right speed control to help us maintain the speed control of their Tornadus, we can just one-shot them with our Ogre Pond, one-shot them with our Great Tusk. We can fake out them with our Real Boom. We have options here. And because we have like all these tools, I would say we don't want to go any deeper into like the flying weakness because we already talked about like rock gets checked by like all the grass stuff we have ice gets checked by all the fire and fighting stuff we have we don't want to go any more into the flying weakness and in reality we actually want to add a mon that will help us beat flying mons but also help solidify a bunch of the last matchups and this is where i actually think this is a great time i think this is how team building is going to be going moving forward you get your core you get your speed control you get like your swiss army knife slash like um you know 
gap filler Pokemon in Rillaboom. And the last slot, you can just add a Ruin Pokemon. We're going to be adding Shempao here. I think Shempao is like a really, really solid mod in this situation. And it's that ice type that we can add to help us against Flyers. So like if Tornadoses are somewhat of a problem, this is something we can add to deal with that. This also like helps in a couple other matchups as well. If we take a look back at our team building guide here. You see Shimpao. This is a ton of weaknesses. Now, normally when I tell people to build teams and like team building guides that we do on Patreon, I don't tell them to go into the red. You see the red, like the three weaknesses to ice, the three weakness to flying, and the four weaknesses to rock. I tell them don't go in the red. Um, but in reality, like this team is going to be a hyper aggressive team. Um, it focuses more on trading and board position. So like, I don't really care if we have a weakness to something. If I KO your teammate, you KO me, you KO me, and then I resend on another Pokemon that checks what you just KO'd me because I'm the one dictating play, I'm the one maintaining board state. And that is where, when we take a look at like the flow chart section of this team, you'll understand a little bit more of how that works. But I do think this team is gonna be very good at getting up its weather control, getting up its speed control, having the right tools to like fake out and pivot correctly, and then start trading and actually like elongating the game into a situation where we have more of an advantage than a disadvantage. So that being said, what we're going to do now that we have all of the mons, we have all the mons in our game. I do need to EV train these Pokemon. I do need to get all the right stuff. So this is where we're going to go take a look at finding out exactly what moves, what EVs, what abilities, and what Terras we need to do. So to do that, what I like to do is then just open up a Pokemon show down here. Normally, like I said, I would do this on pencil and paper. Uh, if you guys ever want to see a video like that, think about let me know. And while, while you're just like watching this video. If you haven't left a like yet, we're trying to get every video to 50 likes. So let me know if you want to see like a team building guide, pencil and paper, and leave a like on the video if you haven't yet. So we have Ogre Bond here. Remember, this guy has to use the Hearth Flame Mask. The way that I like to do these sort of guides right here is I like to add all my moves first because like I don't want to just finish an Ogre Pond and say I have to use these Eevees, have to use this Terra, have to use this whatever um, because that would like lock us into a very specific way to play it. Uh, no, I think the right thing to do is to add just your moves so you can then change your EVs, change moves. And if you don't even know all four moves you want to use, just move on to the next Pokemon and then fill those moves back in when you find holes. So right now we can add moves we know we want on this guy. And if you just click on Pokemon Showdown, it gives you some good idea of moves that you could use in here. I think you need to use uh, whatever that, this thing. You need to use this. So high crit ratio, 100 base power. It says it's grass, but it's going to be a fire type move. So we need this move. This is the move that makes Ogre Pound work. And then from there... I'm thinking of like other moves we know that we're going to want. We're going to want Spiky Shield. So Spiky Shield's going to be a little bit better than Protect. It's going to do residual damage to your opponent every single time they make contact to it. And it's going to be a pivotal part of what we actually want to do with this guy moving forward. So we don't necessarily know what we want to do with the rest of these moves. We're just going to go on to the next Mon. This is where this team gets spicy. This is where this team gets spicy. Now that we don't even need to look at our abilities or tear anything yet. We are going to add Howl here. Howl is the reason why we have a Ninetales on this team and not like a Torkoal and not anything else. Howl. We're going to be able to Howl to not only boost uh, Ogre Pond's attack, but boost our Great Tusk, boost our Rillaboom, boost our Shempao, boosting up everybody out here. Howl is the tech. Races the user's attack and allies by one. It goes through Protect, and we're using physical Ninetales on this team. It's going to be very good. So because we're going to know we're going to be using physical Ninetales, we also should probably use Flare Blitz. Ninetales doesn't get that many physical moves, so we might only be stuck on Flare Blitz, but this is some pretty cool tech, I think. As for Great Tusk, what should we do with Great Tusk? It's a good question, right? I think that even though there's a Rilla on the team, you're probably going to want Earthquake. It's just a really solid move to have. Um, I think you're probably going to want Close Combat. And then I'm actually just going to leave it blank for there because we don't know if we want Ice Spinner. We don't know if we want Rock Slide. We don't know if we want Headlong Rush. There's a lot of other things we could use. And uh, we could even use like a Terra Blast or something weird too. So we're just going to leave this blank. As for Trainus, the reason we added this to the team was Speed Control, right? So we have, uh, let's see, we, we know we want Tailwind, right? So we know we're going to want Tailwind. We're probably going to want Bleak Wind Storm. Do we need Taunt on this guy? We don't know yet. Do we need things like Icy Wind or Scary Face in the Sorry, Scary Sorry, Scary Face in the Sky? We don't know yet. So let's just go on to Rillaboom. We know we added Rillaboom for Fake Out. Right, we know we added it for Fake Out. We can just go on to the next month. That's the only move that we know. Obviously, you're like, you want Grassy Guard, you want this, you want this. That's like, no, no, no. We're just trying to get the rolls out of the way. So, Shempao, what do we want to add in Shempao? The most important move on Shempao, if you're not using a choice item, is Protect. You need to be able to elongate this Pokemon's presence on the board. I can't stress that enough. This thing comes on the board, and it's it enables its teammate to just pop everything, right? And yeah, it does a lot of damage, but like when Shempao comes to the board, 
the quickest way to remove a shim pow from the, its effectiveness from the board is to remove it from the board, right? People just double into it. So if you drop a protect, shim is going to stay on the board and guarantee enable its teammates. So like you compare it next to Tusk and go protect DQ. You compare it next to Ogre Pawn and go like protect the whatever that freaking Ogre Smash move is. That's what it's called. Ivy Crudgel. I'm going to call it Ogre Smash. That's way, that's such a cooler move. But yeah, being able to elongate his presence on the board is going to be really, really good. Do we know if we want to run Taunt? Do we know if we want to run Sucker Punch? Haze? We don't know yet, but we can leave it blank. This is where I also will remind you guys that you want to think about the roles that each of these Pokemon play. I know I talk about that in a lot of my team building guides. We're going to nickname some of these Pokemon what their roles are. So, um, damage. Like, this is the guy we're trying to feature. It's the damage. We're just going to leave it as damage. Um, this is going to be weather support. Right? This is going to be dive buddy one if you want to know what dive buddy see i have uh, oh it doesn't show you my autofills so we got dive buddy dive buddy is a term that i like to use when you have your main damage dealer and you have like your secondary damage dealer so it's like yeah ogre pond's the guy coming and going hot and doing stuff like that but when you need like you when you need a little bit of backup you you call in the reinforcements and you just slam them in so it's like a secondary uh form of damage that so makes it so ogre pond doesn't have to do like all of the hard carrying itself if ogre pond goes down great tusk does a good enough job about being like a secondary ogre pond it's a lot of like single target damage it has a little bit of aoe damage and just a very very bulky mod so we're gonna go up to this guy we're gonna get this guy speed control usually i do this when i um start the team but it works uh this guy is terrain and uh fake out right that's just what that's what this thing's job is uh and then this guy is basically like offensive support. So you can see we have like little roles we want to fill in. We have like our main tank, our main, not even tank, sorry. We have like our main core mom we're building around and we've added like weather and support. We've added like a secondary follow-up guy to help us cover up for matchups where we have problems. We have our speed control. We have our terrain control slash fake outs. And then we have like a secondary offensive support. So not... Ogre Pond doesn't have to do everything itself. There's secondary replacements for it dealing damage. Um, so you can see, like, if I go, like, Ogre Pond and one of these support mons, being, like, the weather support, the speed control, or the offensive support, if they take out Ogre Pond, all three of the support pieces still work if they're on, like, the side. And I can just bring in the uh, Great Tusk into the exact same thing again. So this is the start of understanding how to team build, is understanding what the specific roles for the teams you want are. If you want a more detailed explanation about roles and all those things, let me know, and I'll try and make a video about it. But... This is generally how I like to team build. And I think you need to be very deliberate when you're picking your mons for stuff like this. So let's start filling out the rest of these moves. Note that I haven't gone into Terras. I haven't gone into Eevees. They're not as important as you might think. Uh, having the roles for the Pokemon and the actual thing you want to accomplish with them set out ahead of plan is more important than having like the most perfect EV spread because, you know, moves are really important. So uh, let's think about what else we want to do with this. So because Ogre Pond's so important, I think that it needs a very specific moveset. I think that we're actually going to add Grassy Glide here. Um, I think being able to pair Ogre Pond with uh, Rillaboom with like a Grassy Terrain, double Grassy Glides is very, very good against especially the Water Ogre Pond and stuff like that. So I think this is actually really good. Like Grass Bam is very good right now and it's nice. Now this is where I personally think that you could use a lot of different moves. You could use things like Sword Stance. I'm a big fan of Encore. Encore is amazing. We have enough speed to make it work. It gets Follow Me, it gets Helping Hand, Horn Leech, Knock Off, uh, Leech Seed, Stomping Tantrum, Power Whip, um, uh, Super Power, U-Turn. This thing gets everything, right? They basically just made a Pokemon that got everything. This is where I'm going to make the executive decision to put up Substitute. Now, I think that this is a very, very good Pokemon with Substitute for a number of reasons. And number one reason is well, they want to get it off the board. So if I put up a sub, basically, if my spiky shield's ever on cooldown, they're going to nuke this slot. And we already talked about how important it is to keep this Pokemon alive. So if I put up a sub and they only throw one attack into it, I get get out of dodge for one turn. That's really, really nice. Another thing is, like, everyone knows that, like, Ogre Ponds use spiky shield. So there's going to be some situations where, like, they're like, you know what? I'm not going to attack that thing. It's probably spiky shielding. I don't want to get, I don't want to take the damage. I don't want to lose my sash. I don't, I don't want to deal with that. I'm just going to attack its teammate right? Because they, they might spiky shield. And so if you can weave in that free sub, then they're like, oh crap, that's a sub. I have to break that. I know, I must hit this. Then you spiky shield, right? So I think that substitute's really, really good on this guy. Um, I also think like against Trick Room teams, um, we'll talk about how this team beats Trick Room in just a moment, but you can just put up a sub and then weave in a spiky shield and then like 
they break your sub and you put up like another sub on that turn and you spike a shield again and then you've waited out the trick room, right? So it's just ways to deal with those things. Um, and also when you have subs that you up, uh, you are immune to like intimidates and things like that. So it's, it's really, really cool tech. Uh, yes, we're not going to be as aggressive, but that's where things like how come in to like help us get that extra damage. Also like being able to like weave in um, spiky shields and subs through the use of like grassy terrain, being able to restore health. It's actually really, really nice. So I like it. Um, nine tails. Let's talk about what else nine tails really brings to the table. You can see a lot of these moves here. We don't really get any other physical moves, but we need one way to help us beat Trick Room, and I think that Roar is probably going to be it. Now remember, Roar is a move that phases your opponent out. We were using a Roar team really relatively recently, and it has a minus six priority versus my, Trick Room has a minus seven. So if your opponent's setting Trick Room and you're roaring that slot, you will be able to roar them before they get their Trick Room off. So this is not a concrete 100% counter to Trick Room. You have to surround it with the right teammates, but it is an option. First trick room and this also works against other pokemon that are getting set up so if your opponent gets the like they like shell smash with like a torterra or they get some sort of big boost on something you can just roar those pokemon and phase them out so i think that's probably gonna be pretty nice i was thinking like what i wanted to use as this last move slot and i'm thinking like you could just put protect there's nothing wrong with protect it's a good move you could put random moves like hypnosis um disables things like that um some people would say helping hand in any situation where i'd want a helping hand i'd probably just uh go with a how because i'm outspeed most mons on this team anyways so i was thinking like what i really want to do you don't really need safeguard um i don't really want to put sub here wisp isn't really that great charm wouldn't really do that much so i'm just gonna put encore uh this is a move that i really like a lot so i think it's just very very solid you can encore like a lot of moves your opponent this is one of those make the magic happen moves like you can even have nine tails in the back condition them into like using the wrong move like a fake out or like a protect swap nine tails on that, on that turn on a read and then encore lock them so it's like this is one of those like make the magic happen moves and i just think it's good so we're gonna go encore in that slot as for tusk it's weird i'm a fan of i don't really know if i want to go booster here or scarf or band or orb i'm actually a big fan of orb tusk like a big fan and i don't, I don't really know where i want to get my protosynthesis boost to because I feel like I should just run Scarf Tusk. I feel like this should just be a Scarf Tusk team that gets a boost to attack. But like, what if it was like a Scarf Tusk team that like got a boost to speed, bro? That'd be nuts. <laughs> In the photosynthesis, that'd be kind of cool. I, I think that like there's also arguments for like Banded Tusk. So I don't really know exactly how I want to make this work. I, I like I said though, I'm a big fan of Life Orb Tusk. Um, I don't actually even hate like Protect Taunt Tusk. It gets so many good moves. Um, but that being said, let's let's assume that we're probably going to make it a choice item set. Um, I don't think there's anything really wrong with Rock Slide. I don't think we need Ice Spinner because we don't want to take away our terrain. Um, there's nothing really wrong with throwing Headlong Rush on here if we're going to be using choice because we don't always want to Earthquake. Remember, Earthquake is mitigated by the grassy terrain. So these are good. And then, like, as for this last move, you don't really need Head Smash. You don't really want Ice Spinner don't really need knockoff we get so many cool moves on this guy i think you just go rock slide right i think you just go rock slide get that flinch chance like it's sometimes just the play so let's sit on these for now can always go back and change them for this guy i think we are going to want the taunt um for sure and then as for this last move you could like have scary face you could have icy wind you could have sunny day i think those are all viable options i think i am comfortable with icy wind I, I'm comfortable with Icy Wind. Uh, I just like it. I think it's just a solid option in a lot of situations. If you can get up your tailwind correctly, you're good to go. If we have to change it, we'll change it. As for the Rilla, we definitely want the Grassy Glide, right? That's like the whole point of this team. And then what are we going to do with the rest of its moveset? I'm actually a fan of Stomping Tantrum on Rilla just to be able to check Heatrans just a little bit better. And uh, I have no problem throwing the Wood Hammer on there. So solid set. We don't really need U-Turn. Any situation where I would want to U-Turn with this Rilla, I could just hard swap it. And we're not going to be doing a lot of switching. Like I said, this team's going to focus a lot on trading, not like switching and mitigating damage. As for the Shim Pout, we're probably going to use a Sash set on this guy. Um, I am a fan of Icicle Crash for multiple reasons. Um, yes, it can miss, right? But it also has a chance to flinch, and it doesn't make contact. So you don't actually get that, like, you know, rough skin, rocky helmet, you know, break your Sash type thing. So I like this. Um, I'm also still a fan of Sucker Punch. I'm um, that guy. And then, like, I'm going to put Sacred Sword. This is, like, the good old-fashioned set. If Dozo is a problem for you when you're building these teams and you have a Shimpao, just throw Haze on it. Haze, Shimpao, it, like, 
we might still end up putting Haze on this thing. But Sacred Sword actually does a good enough damage against Dozo, but we're starting to see a lot more Ghost Hero Dozos, which are kind of too spicy. Um, but yeah, that's our move set. So it looks like we have all the moves for all of our Pokemon. This is where I want to make sure all of our abilities are right. So you don't, you know, like, again, obviously we aren't going to be using Flash Fire Ninetales, right? But who knows? Like, if we got through and found a bunch of situations where, like, Sunny Day was, like, really, really good on Torrent and we didn't need the Drought and we could use it as bait, and, like, obviously we have a lot of weaknesses to fire and we could swap it and have, like, Flash Fire, we want to have, we want to keep our minds open to those ideas. That's why we're doing our abilities this late. But, obviously, we are going to use Drought. Drought's good. Photosynthesis, Prankster, uh, Grassy Surge, and then, um, Sword of Root. So those are our abilities. Now we can start putting our items down here. So we talked about doing a Sash here. Um, obviously this is going to look like an Assault Vest. Uh, I'm a fan of Covert Cloak here. If you're building for best of three open team sheet, I would probably not use Cloak. I'd use more like Rocky Helmet, uh, Life Orb, Citrus, Mental Orb, things like that. Um, but that's just my opinion. Because it's going to be for a best of one ladder, we're just playing it like ladder. This is this item is weird. I, I think that... I think you need Choice Scarf. And we'll talk about why we need it in a sec. Because like the things that would pin the Ogre Pond would be things like Fluttery... Shen Pao, like those those faster guys, right? And we want to be able to be like, no, <laughs> no, nope, I will, I'll break you. Uh, we might even want to change, no, I think Headlong Rush is fine. I was going to say change uh, this to like Heavy Slam for Flutter, but I don't think we need it. As for the Ninetales, this is a weird one, right? We don't want a Rocky Helmet. We, I actually thought about the Balloon. People give me a lot of crap for using the Balloon on the other team, but like for pairing it with that, like why not, right? Um, I actually think I'm going to put a Charcoal here. 1.2 boost. Just make it a little bit stronger for your Blitz. I don't think you need a mental orb. Um, like if we think about like items, like none of these items really fit with what we want. Uh, life orb could be viable, but like we're already taking a ton of recoil. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit on this one, um, and I think it could be good. So uh, now it's time to finally take a look at some Eevees and think about what we want to do. So let's go back to this guy. Well. Let's actually start by taking a look at Nine Tails because we're going to be using Howl, right, to give our move, our Mons plus one attack boost. So we want to be able to outspeed as many Pokemon as possible with this Nine Tails, so we can Howl and immediately enable them. So we want to take a look at how fast Nine Tails can actually get. Nine Tails is a base 100 speed Pokemon. It's a very popular speed tier. It gets to 167. So that means things like the Ogre Pond. Um, and the Rillaboom, we want to keep under that level, but we still want the Ogre Pond to outspeed very specific things. So going back to this Ogre Pond's EV spread, you don't have to do all your Mon's EV spreads at once. Um, we want this Ogre Pond to underspeed Ninetales, but outspeed things that it's uh, would be weak against. I would say the biggest threat to Ogre Pond would probably be Landorus. Landorus could just go for big Earthquakes when we're in Fire Mode. It can go for big uh, Terra Blast Flyings when we're in... Um, you know, our regular Grass Fire Mode. And if I were just to go like this, and be like, well, yeah, I just go 252... 252 adamant you know if i were just to do something like that well a jolly landers would just outspeed us right so what we actually want to do is probably still be jolly but have enough speed to outspeed landers this is where we go to the damage calculator right so again this is the standard uh you know damage calculator on pokemon showdown i'll probably try link uh leave a link to it in the description but let's plug in landers and let's plug in ogre pond and we want to plug in Landorus Therian, because that's what we're taking a look at. So Landorus Therian, the fastest it can possibly get is a 252, let's plug in like a Jolly set here. You can get to 157, right? And the set that we have right here, 162 outspeeds that. Oh, oh don't look at that yet. All right, let's see. 152 Landorus Therian. No, oh, it's not Therian. Yeah, it is Therian. All right, cool, cool. 91. So the f we, we could technically do that and still outspeed the Landers. Landers is a 91 base speed, and Ogre Pond is, like, such a high base speed that, like, we still would outspeed that guy even without, like, our nature. But, like, let's start thinking, like, other Mons that, like, have, like, a pretty high base speed. Something like an Urshifu. Urshifu is... Right here. Let's just plug in a regular Urshi Dark. So an Urshifu is... 252 Jolly, uh, what is it? 163. So it outspeeds us by one. So a Jolly Ursh would outspeed us by one. So you can see because of that, we probably should go Jolly and just drop our points to outspeed that right there. So 180, right? 180. Now, it sucks we're not going to be able to hit as hard, but we have so much damage multipliers. We have things like the Sun. We have things like the Howl. 
I think we're gonna be fine. We still don't even have to go like full attack investment. Like I still think we could. Um, but realistically, what I would probably do here is because we have like a lower base HP than some of our other stats as well. Make sure just take a look. Am I looking at the right ogre pawn? Because it says like one ten. Okay, this is one ten speed. Um, for some reason, I thought I was looking at the one twenty base speed one. Anyways, uh, realistically, what I would do here is just throw uh, four in each respective defense here. And then just throw 60, uh, yeah, 68 in HP. So you normally you want to put your points in HP over things like defense and special defense because you would, you get a bigger value putting points in HP first in a lot of situations, especially when your HP is lower than your respective defenses. Um, basically, like uh, the example I always use is something like, um, how would I how would I word this for people? I, I like to use a. Ursh let's use an Urshifu on this side. Let's use an Urshifu. And let's give the Urshifu close combat. Right? So the Urshifu close combat, let's set it to level 50. Let's make it fight Tyrogue. Tyrogue. And the reason we're using a Tyrogue here is that's base 35 on all of its stats. So if we were to put the points straight into HP, it goes from a 45 on the low roll. Again, when you're the attacker, you want to take a look at the low roll. When you're the defender, you want to take a look at the high roll. But since we're the attacker, we're taking a look at the low roll, which is 45. And you can see it goes from 45 to 35. It's only a 10% mitigated. If you put those same points into defense, it would mitigate from 45 to 28, which is significantly more. It's about 50% more, right? Um, so you may be thinking, why don't I just always put points in defense? And the reason why you want to put points in HP first is because it mitigates that initial 10% to both defense and special events at the same time. You're generally just a bulkier Pokemon. So if you don't know where to put your stats, usually you want to put them in HP first. That's not always the case. Because if we take a look at, like, Blissey, if I can type, if we take a look at, like, a Blissey, Blissey has a really, really high base HP. So if we put those same points in defense, it would go from a 205, which is still a KO, to 98. They'd have a chance to live if we put them all in defense. If we put those same points in HP, it goes from 205 to 187, right? So that's, that's like, not, that's, like, nothing mitigated at all. And that's because Blissey has such a bloated HP. So when your Pokemon don't have crazy bloated HP stats, you usually want to put your points in HP first because it mitigates both damage to defense and special defense at the same time. If you guys have questions about that, let me know. Um, I've covered it extensively in other videos, but usually HP works. It, it definitely, it stops working when you get into, like, the base, like, 120s and 130s of HP bases. So this is fine. So that's for the night. That's our Ogremon set. If we need to tweak it and add like a little bit more defense for something specific, we can maybe add a little bit more speed up for something we can. But I think this is a fine set. As for our nine tails, um, I think realistically, like we're just gonna de damage, and that's that's just the set. You know, like I want to hit as hard as I can, and that's basically just how that's gonna go. We need to be as fast as possible, and this is just what we need. We need to be fast on course, fast howls, fast flare blitz. It doesn't get much better than that. As for the Tusk, Tusk needs to outspeed some very specific Pokemon. I think Tusk needs to always outspeed Goldango. Um, not that Goldango is going to be sitting at plus one all that often, but by outspeeding plus one Goldango, we'll be fine. Um, let's take a look at Great Tusk. And let's see what the, sa the Scarf would actually get us. Again, we also need to outspeed some very specific Pokemon. Let's take a look at like Fluttermane. We need to outspeed Fluttermane, right? That's a, that's a pretty important Pokemon to outspeed is Fluttermane. So if you take a look at Fluttermane, give it like a 252 um, Timid set. Timid, right there. It gets a 205, and we get the 208. And I think that's great. I think that's absolutely great. You could, um, you also would outspeed Bundle. Bundle would be one point uh, faster, right? So Iron Bundle would be like a 136. Right, 206, so we outspeed that as well. The only thing that we don't outspeed with this Tusk is Dragapult, which gets a 214, and I don't really care that we don't outspeed Dragapult with our Tusk, because like, I'm not afraid of Dragapult with my Tusk. Um, I don't even care if we get Wisped, like, that's fine. Um, so I think I, and I want the Adamant, right? I want us to still have our boost um, Protosynthesis into attacks. So, like, I, I'm actually just gonna keep it relatively simple like that. This will just outspeed be anything we really need to outspeed. We don't outspeed that Timid Scarf Goldango. But I think it's enough just to get the team building going. Um, and I don't think there's really a problem. Note that it's uh, putting a last four in Spadef because, our again, our HP is so bloated, you don't want to put those points in there. We can sit on this for now. You don't need to make your EVs perfect. Like, no, we've been doing this team building for like 30 minutes. The EVs aren't as important as having the right moves, having the right Terras, having the right items, and having the right intention behind the Mons. The EVs can always be changed, right? The EVs should be changed to suit 
the needs of the role. You need to find the role first. And if Tusk is just the wrong role for the team, we can cut it. We don't need to go and spend two hours making Tusk EV spreads. This is fine. Going into Torn. And again, I actually think that like there's nothing really wrong with going in. And if we want our Torn to do a very specific job, make it do a very specific job. I don't want to have my Torn lose speed ties to other Torns. I don't want to get taunted by other Torns on turn one. I don't want... Once we trade Tailwinds with Torns, them to outspeed me with Bleak Winds or Icy Winds, I would like to go first with my Torn when I see other... I, I always want to have confidence that my team can do what I want it to do. So, like, that's why we have a lot of these mods with, like, heavy speed investment. So when we go into the mirror, we're like, I'm you, but you have to risk it all because I know how fast I am. And that's just how I feel. You can make a bulkier Torn with, like, I said, like, a Mental or a Citrus Berry, but this one is just very one-dimensional to the point it gets up its tailwind if you KO it it's focusing on trading remember if you KO this torn at the wrong time and i bring out a nine tails or bring out a great tusk we have shots to win the game rule boom though we're not going to go too big on this guy um we can still go too to attack if we really want to but rule boom i actually think is very very good at being a speed reduced mon for a few different things this is first of all really really good versus tr we're gonna be able to under speed those entities right and then when they we, if i were to weed rule boom and you were to weed entity what would happen is the terrains would happen based off our speed tiers, and Real Boom and Indy share the same speed tier. So, because we're going zero speed speed reduced, they're going to set Psychic Terrain, we're going to get a Grassy Terrain, which means we can now fake out things. So against a Trick Room matchup, we can then go for like a fake out Roar into whatever those slots are, and we're in a great spot, and we can 100% stop TR. It's so nice. So, that's really, really important on this guy. And then just having like a slower Rilla, I think it's just good. If you did want U-turn here over want something like the Woodhammer, so you can go for a slow U-turn, that's definitely possible. But it's not like Rilla really benefits from the speed control. We're using a lot of priority moves, so we can just go really, really bulky. After that, we have a lot of points extra. Um, I would say you want to put at least like 60 points into Spadef. Um, you're just going to find more value than you might think. And then like from there, I would just throw the rest in HP. So... You always want to split up your EVs as well if you can to like throw some in defense and spit up every single time. But this is one of the situations where 196 gets us something. But if we were to take and make that like a 192 and go four, you see like this is like a no man's land in between 188 and 196. Like if I take one out here, the number doesn't go down. 196 is the ding. So the way EVs work is the first four points matter. The first four points give you something. And after that, it's every eight. So four would give you something. 12 would give you something. 20 would give you something. 28. So the next one will be 36. You can see 32, that's the same number as 28, right? So that's why you don't always uh, wanna, you, you wanna make sure that you're going into your levels correctly. And you can always do, you can always find the right level by like putting something in and going, let's say I have, let's say like, hmm, is 12 right? I don't know, let's put in 12. And you can see like the actual number that it goes to. And if you take one out, right? You can see if it's the right number to be at, right? So if we take one out, it goes to from 112 to 111, right? So, but if like we were at like 16 and we took one out and the number stayed the same and the number stayed the same and the number stayed the same and the number stayed the same, the stayed the same you can see that this is the last number where it changes, put one more to go right back into it and you're good to go. So hopefully that explains EV screening just a little bit more. And again, like I said, this isn't as important as having the right role for the Pokemon. As for the Shimpao, I'm a big fan of just Sashin. If you're Sashin, you just go for 2v2 club. Um, just because... You don't need to prioritize bulk on a mon that whose main job is just to get two shotted. That's just my opinion. There's definitely ways that we could optimize this, but not in like a 30 minute team building guide. So now that we have all of our EVs, all of our moves, all of our items, and a lot of our playstyle done, this is where I finally do Terra's. And I feel that with Terra, Terra is like a last minute bandage on a problem. That's just how I see it. Um, certain mons need Terra to like double dip into like special like double dip into like specific roles so like for Tornius, i like keeping flying because you can actually keep her flying terra and in some situations you'll pick up ko on amoongus where you wouldn't normally pick it up so that's good same thing against like rilla so like if, if their rilla is like at 80 percent you can just terrestrialize your tornadoes and oko them with a bleak wind so if they swap it on an icy wind you can go terra bleak wind and finish them off that's nice um for things like rilla you probably want to change your Terra. For things like this, you probably want to change your Terra. For Ninetales, definitely change your Terra. Ogrebon can't change its Terra, but you can see how, like, we can use this to, like, cover up for holes in the matchups. We're talking about Trick Room and how we need to, like, have better ways to deal with it because, like, yeah, we have, like, Taunt here, uh, and yeah, we have Fake Out, but, like, those are definitely not good enough to stop Trick Room. I think the thing that's going to help us stop Trick Room the most is making this into a Ghost type. Um, this is going to help for a few reasons. First of all, we can just avoid fake outs and go for Howls, and then we Encore Lock the fake outs. But in reality, we're going to go Ghost, so they can't fake out us, and then we can just always roar correctly. So it's going to be a safer roar, safer Howl, safer Encore, 
and uh, generally just a solid terror type on nine tails. For this guy, I, I it's so weird. I, I feel like a lot of people like to double dip their ground, and a lot of people like to like double dip all the other types. But I have found that I just love dark typing on this guy. I don't know what it is about dark type tusk. I've it has won me so many games. First of all, they can't just stay in with their like. So people used to use like a lot of Gothitelle. People like to just throw in like entities with psychics against like Psy spam. This is amazing. Um, and it just it just whiffs, right? I think Steel Terra is another good one as well. But I also think like against people that want to use like prankster moves against them. So like prankster speed control through the use of like scary face against Tusk. Well, you go Dark Terra, that doesn't work, right? So same thing like prankster quash, prankster will o wisp. It's gonna block all of those. So like I actually really just like this, and it covers up for like your most common weakness other than fairy, which is psychic. And yeah, you have that weakness to fairy, but we just talked about, we just made an EV spread that lets us outspeed all the common fairies like Fluttermain, so we're good to go. Talked about leaving uh, this guy the same. And then as for Rilla, what Terra do we want to go? We have weaknesses to ice. We have weaknesses to flying. Um, we have weaknesses to fire. I think fire is what people normally go. But I don't think we need to go fire. I kind of want to go ground and double dip my stomping tantrum. What would be the? What would be wrong with that? Is, would ghost be good? You could, there's also some value in having double ghost terra, so you can actually always swap mons out uh, in a parish trap situation. So you can just go terra and swap out if you're trapped from parish. That's a uh, that's a thing. You don't want to go flying terra. There's just there's a bunch of different terras. What terras would you guys go on on Rilla in this situation? I've seen people using fairy Rilla. I'd probably want a terra that lets me block other ogre pawns. I actually don't dislike dragon terra on a lot of mons in this format either. I think Ghost is good. Steel. I mean, I, fire is the best. It, it lets us block Ice and Fire Remove, so just Fire. Just we have a lot of Fire already. Um, so yeah, here's the here's the team. And this is where we're going to finally go into the flow charting section. I bet you guys thought we were done. Now we're going to go into the flow charting section. So I already actually did it. I already did the flow charting section. And this is where, if I was playing with a pencil and paper, what I would do here, I'll just show you guys and we'll start talking about it. What I would be doing here is for every single one of these lead options, I would be filling a whole piece of paper. So like we're going to take a look at the very first one and we're going to explain what these are in just a minute. So if I were to be leading like uh, Ogre Pawn and Torn, I'd say every good thing about it. It outspeeds all these mons. It lets us avoid like these problems. These are four or five different ways I can set it up. I can be like weave in a spiky shield or weave in a sub or make them overcommit into this or pivot into that. We're going to talk about all the good things, all the bad things, fill up like a whole piece of paper, which is information just being dumped onto a piece of paper that tells us what this does. And you're going to do that for every weed combination. There's 15 different potential weed combinations. All of them have their advantages. All of them have their disadvantages. Some of them in the lower tiers, like the B tier and C tier weeds, you know, their disadvantages can be used as strength. So like Ninetales and Tusk seems pretty underwhelming, but if you can bait them into attacking the Ninetales, the Ninetales will enable the Tusk. It'll be an anti uh, weather weed, which will force your opponent to bring in their weather mantra, which means they're attacking with less mons. And then you switch in your Tusk and EQ, and then you chunk their weather setter like a polytope for like half, and the next turn you just tailwind and enable it again. So even if they had like a weather setter, you'd still be really good. Um, so like even disadvantages can be used as strength. And so the way I like to do this is I like to organize them by S tier weeds, A tier weeds, B tier weeds, and C tier weeds. I would say for a team to be competitively viable and have options at like a best of three open team sheet level, you need at least three S tier leads. You need at least three leads that your, your opponent can see like, that's a good lead. I can see that in team preview. They have to respect that core, right? Because we don't have at least three. Um, you can't play three games in a best of three, right? You can't have three solid enough game plans that you can't just win the same way every single time. You need different ways to win. And so understanding um, what all these different leads bring to the table is really important. So this team has four, I would say, S tier leads. First one being Torn Ogre. It's just very fast, very, very oppressive. It creates a bar. It says if your opponent's not this tall, they lose. I go Tailwind, I slap you with the Ogre, you lose a Mon. Even if I trade, even if you take out my Ogre, we already talked about that, the way the team's built with the second dive, but you just bring in the Tusk and continue trading. Or if you take out the Torn, cool, I bring the Tusk on this side, and now I have Speed Control and just dumpster you with both the Mons. That's the way the flow chart's set up. That's why it's an S tier lead. It's very oppressive. If your opponent's not hitting you with the right speed tiers or the right mons or, you know, playing at a specific level, they just lose. 
Uh, Ogre Nine Tails, we talked about setting up that one. It's the Howl variant. It's better against teams that don't have a ton of speed control. But even if they do, you can always just leave like Ogre Nine Tails, Hard Switch Out Nine Tails for uh, Torn. Torn's going to block some attack and then go for Tailwind plus the uh, Weather Boost, and just Ogre just rinses and repeats people over. If people want to wait out the speed control, you can weave in things like Substitute as well. If they go for a Fake Out Weeds, uh, you can just go Ghost Terra's Taunt, or sorry, Encore things. You can see how they, they kind of just come together. Um, the Ogorilla lead, I really like that. That's the Grass Spam lead. So we just go double Grassy Glide into getting rid of problems. Just a solid board state. We have Fake Out there. We can go Fake Out Sub. There's three or four different flow charts that they, they flow into from there. But you can see because this team, they have, the S tier weeds have so many options, right? That's what makes them so good. Um, and then Tusk Torn, uh, you just go EQ Tailwind, EQ Taunt, EQ Bleak Wind, EQ Icy Wind. Really, really good stuff. Just solid damage. A tier weeds aren't going to be as good. They're a little bit more one dimensional. You can see it's a lot of like tusk slash ogre things. So it's like compare. It's like instead of having our main mon plus like our support, we're going into more. Well, I know exactly what you're doing. This is where we we dip into the A tier teams in like a game two. So like we'd go into like okay, well I understand your speed control. I understand what you're trying to do. I can actually just lead my tusk and my shim power, or like my tusk and my ogre, and just pop something. Trade one of my mons pop another one, pop another one, and then the game's over. So once you understand a little bit more like what your opponent's bringing to the table and you're comfortable with these B or sorry, the A tier leads, you can start using them correctly to solve for specific matchups. You can see like uh, a lot of these are like fake out plus speed control, fake out plus like a single target nuke, fake out plus like static damage. Um, it's just good. The B tier leads are going to be a little bit worse. I actually really like dipping into these in game. I actually use a lot of my B tier leads in game one, actually, because I am familiar with the flow charts on a lot of my teams. But basically, like, you can see this is where our, our matchup specific ones go. Like, so against Trick Room, we have a bunch of our Trick Room leads here. Um, Nine Tails is good. Rill is good. Torn's good against some of those. Uh, we talk about like different ways to use nine tails to like pivot in and force your opponent to over respect certain slots so this is where when you get your opponent like understanding a little bit of what, what you're doing you dangle the carrot on the string and then you punish them correctly uh with some of these b tier weeds uh, i would say things like torn shampoo even though those are two good mons uh shampoo is really really exposed and we talked about shampoo needing to elongate its presence on the board by using protect and playing defensively and you need a good teammate to make that work. You need to be able to do damage. And like Torn doesn't really do a ton of damage. So that's why it's in the B tier lead. And then the C tier lead is like Ninetales Shimpao. Again, like we talk, we're talking about like what they could bring to the table. It's a C tier lead because it's slow. It has no speed control. It has no redirect. It loses the redirection. It loses the fake out. And it goes for, it has like what protect how. That's the best that it does. I also just remembered going back to this. I forgot to change this to ghost. You need ghost on your Shimpao, obviously. So we have all of our Mons, all of our Terras, all of our flowcharts. If you guys want a specific guide on flowcharts, I can try and make one where I actually flesh it out and do everything for a team. So let me know if you guys want to see something like that in the future. But this usually takes about 10, 15 minutes. And you want to actually, when you're playing these games in the ladder, go and force yourself to like use these A tier leads on purpose. You already know, if you're someone that's been playing more than 10 games with this team, how these leads work. You don't need to just blindly play thousands of games doing the same lead over and over again it's not going to make you any better what you actually need to do to understand how to win in a best of three is to win with these force yourself like go into any game you play and be, put yourself in a situation of all right i won game one already or i lost game one already how would i make changes against that opposing team if this was like a game two or a game three situation what could my b tier weeds do here force yourself into trying to find wins with other teams and other lead combinations bringing the right teammates in the back, you know, setting up a situation where you know if you lead a specific way, it's going to bait a fake out. So in baiting that fake out, you can swap in your nine tails to encore it to force them to switch. And on that switch, you double switch back into something else. You don't even have to encore because they see it all in the open team sheet, right? There's so many different things you can do, but it's up to you to build your own flow charts. It's up to you to build your own, uh, you know, lead combinations and how actually you can find wins with almost anything. So hopefully you guys like this. Um, I'm going to tell you guys, that's all we got. I don't have the team in game. Like, if we take a look at, like, what I got in game, like, I got this Ogre Palm, but, like, I haven't Eevee trained it, right? It's the Rogna. I still have to get all the Mons. So we built the team. If you guys want to see me play some games with this team, you know, uh, you're going to have to leave a comment and let me know. Um, I, I can get these. I can start Eevee training all these guys uh, probably the day the video goes up if you guys want to see it. Uh, the Eevees look pretty simple. Um, the hard part, I think, is getting like all the bottle caps and all everything so i could probably do it but um if you guys want to see it let me know and uh yeah i just want to say thank you guys so much for watching and if you guys like this content want to see more i'll make more so thank you guys so much for watching peace out i'll see you guys next time